With this video we're going to look at differential equations of the form v equals f of x, some function of position, and the acceleration a equals uh, some function of the velocity. Alright, so a particle moves in a straight line according to v the velocity is equal to 3 minus x the position all squared for x is less than 3. Uh, we're given also that when x equals 2, uh, uh, that occurs when t equals 0. So we want to find the position function. Okay, so we've got v is dx dt, okay, which is 3 minus x squared, and we'd like to find x of t. And uh, so often maybe the case is that um, we often start in, in a direction we don't quite expect. We want x of t, so why not just integrate with respect to t? Well not quite that easy because there's no t on the right here. So what we could do is let's take the reciprocal of both sides, dt on dx is 1 on 3 minus x all squared, okay? And then we're going to differentiate, uh, we're going to integrate that with respect to x. So what we really have is, uh, what we really have is uh, dt dx integrated with respect to x. Okay, because on the right hand side here, we can integrate with respect to x because there's only x's here. All right, and so this will give us the integral dt, all right, uh, plus a constant, of course. Okay, so the integral dt is the integral of 1 on 3 minus x squared dx, and we just apply the integral tables to these to anti-differentiate this. We get that gives us on the left t, and on the right we have 1 on 3 minus x. You can check that actually works, as if you, um, 1 on 3 minus x is equal to 3 minus x to the power of minus 1, and then if you were to differentiate that, so if we did d dx okay well that's going to give us minus 1 outside of 3 minus x to the power of minus 2 times the derivative inside which will be times negative 1 and so that'll give us uh, 3 minus x to the power of negative 2 which is the same as 1 over 3 minus x squared all right now, having done that, I might just clear part of that off, clear my screen a bit. All right. All right. Now, so I've got all that. Uh, I might just clear that as well, actually. So I can leave that bit there. Okay, so that now leaves us with t equals 1 on 3 minus x plus c. All right. And we know that when t equals 0, t equals 0, x is equal to 2. So where t is, let's put 0, so 0. And where the x is here, let's put 2. We have 1 on 3 minus 2 plus c. Well, that's 1 on 1 is 1 plus c. That's equal to 0. So c must be minus 1. All right, that gives us t equals 1 on 3 minus x minus 1. And that's great, that's time as a function of position, but we were asked to find x as a function, position as a function of time. Okay, so step one, let's uh, add one to both sides. t plus one is one on three minus x. Let's take the reciprocal of both sides. One on t plus one is three minus x. Um, let's uh, add three to both sides and subtract one on t minus one from both sides. We get x equals three minus one on t plus one or x as a function of t, position as a function of t is 3 minus 1 on t plus 1. Okay, let's have a look at a different question now. Let's have a look at the other variety, the one involving acceleration, which is a rate of change of the velocity with respect to time. So a particle moves in a straight line according to a, the acceleration is equal to minus v, the velocity on 4, minus v on 4. And v equals 20 when t equals 0. So its initial velocity is 20 uh, units per unit of time, meters per second, let's just say. I didn't specify units in the problem here. Um, when t equals zero. So find v of t, the velocity as a function of time, and find the position as a function of time. So a is dv dt is minus v on 4. And um, again, if we flip this, 
uh, we'll find the problem a little bit more amenable because we'll be able to put the Vs on one side, so to speak. Okay, so dV dt is minus V on 4, but dt dV is minus 4 on V. And so the integral, and again, it's dt, uh, dt dV integrated with respect to V, and we're also on this side going to integrate with respect to V. So we're doing that to both sides. And we have uh, minus 4 out front of the integral 1 on V dV. Very easy to integrate. The antiderivative of, of 1 on V is just going to be the natural log of V. Okay, so we're going to end up with T equals minus 4 times the natural log of V plus our constant. Now we're told that V is equal to 20 when T is equal to 0. So let's put in here where T is, let's put 0. And where V is, let's put 20. So we have 0 is equal to minus 4 times the natural log of 20 plus C. And that implies that c is equal to 4 times the natural log of 20. Okay, let's put that back in uh, to our original equation. And we have t is equal to minus 4 times the natural log of v plus 4 times the natural log of 20. Okay, now what we're going to do is make use of the log laws. Um, and what we'll do is we'll factor out a factor of minus 4. <clears throat> and when we take minus 4 out here outside the parentheses, we put natural log of v, of course. And when we put minus in here, this minus and this minus gives us back the original plus that's in here. So we'll have minus 4. Okay, so what we have in parentheses is natural log of V minus a natural log of 20. Okay, now log laws, because where you have the difference of these two logs, okay, of the same base, then it, the, the log law says it's just the natural log of uh, the first argument divided by the second. So natural log of V on 20. Uh, we've also divided by negative 4 here, so two steps in one here, so divide both sides by negative 4, so we have minus t on 4, and apply the log law here, which gives us a natural log of v on 20. Okay, well let's exponentiate both sides now. So we have e to the minus t on 4, and exponential e to the power of natural log v on 20, well the exponential and the log cancel, and we're left with v on 20, and that implies that v is equal to 20 times e to the minus t on 4. Okay, or v, the velocity as a function of time, is 20 times e to the power of negative t on 4. So we found the first part. We found v of t, the velocity as a function of time. Next thing we need to find was the position as a function of time. Okay, well, the velocity as a function of time is the rate of change of position with respect to time. And that's equal to 20 times e to the minus t on 4. Okay, again, same thing. Uh, let's anti-differentiate. Um, here, okay, both sides with respect to t, both sides with respect to t, and that gives us uh, the integral dx here, okay, That'll, when we anti differentiate that will end up with x, okay. Uh, this really is, that bit there, what we're really doing, again, I'll explain this, dx dt integrated with respect to t, okay, and that's going to give us x down here. Okay, yeah, it is the antiderivative of 20 times e to the minus t on 4 integrated with respect to t. So that will just be minus 80 e to the minus t on 4. Okay, and uh, because that factor of 4 goes underneath here, um, or that factor of 1 quarter goes underneath there, and 20 divided 1 quarter is the same as 4 times 20. The minus makes it minus 80 times e to the power of negative t on 4 plus c. We were told initially that x equals 0 when t equals 0. So where um, x is, we put 0. Where t is, we're going to put 0. 0 is equal to minus 80 times e to the power of 0. Well, e to the power of 0 is just 1. So it leaves us with 0 equals minus 80 plus c. So c must be plus 80. And so our position uh, our function as a function of time, x, the position as a function of time, is minus 80e to the minus t on 4 plus 80. Or writing it this way, we can factorise our x, the position as a function of time, is 80 times in parentheses 1 minus e to the minus t on 4. All right.